Hi everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Sitting here in a 2014 Honda Odyssey. Customer states that when sitting in the kid school pickup line that the AC blows warm and then they hear a loud screeching noise and a loud buzzing noise and then a bunch of smoke comes out from under the car over there. So uh, we're gonna make a determination of what's going on right about now. 168,478 miles. And it's 576 miles past its oil change. So we're gonna do that too. Parking the minivan, powering down. Wait, what am I thinking? I have to duplicate the customer's concern. Let's see. Hello, 3.5 liter. All right, so I'm kind of looking around, looking for a noise in here. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is that uh, this radiator fan is not coming on. It's only running off of this low speed fan. Oh, flashlight gravity. Now, that's not okay because with the AC running, this high side fan, high speed fan should be running over here as well, and it is not. And I think I can prove that it should be running. We're gonna hit it with a impact device. There it goes. Should try to come on again. And this one won't. Come on, fan. There it goes. Yeah, it's pulling some heat now. I feel it. Now, seeing as how that fan came on. Well, I banged on it. That tells me that the circuitry is good. It just simply indicates to me that the motor has failed and the motor will not power on when uh, commanded. So uh, we're going to need that, that fan motor assembly. So real quick, I want to take this opportunity to show you guys what happens to the high side head pressure on an AC system when one of the fans is not running. You're going to like this. Let's open that up. So I've been watching these uh, pressures uh, for about five, 10 minutes now with this thing idling. You see here how our high side is creeping up almost 300 PSI. That's because that other fan is not running and we're not getting as much heat transfer through the condenser as we need and it's causing excessive high side pressure. So watch this, we're gonna kick this fan back on and then watch the high side pressure fall. There we go. There's our fan, it's running. Keeps moving again. And look at that. High side's already falling to where it should be. And still falling. Wow, hey, look at that fan blade in there. You see it wobbling around? I hope the frame rate catches it, but it's wobbling all over the place. All right, so we definitely need that fan. Go ahead and disconnect the machine. Time to raise this thing up. Let's spill that oil out. Oh, that's hot. That is so hot. There. Needed some insulation. Tap click. I'm looking here for 82 degrees and relatively low humidity. That high side pressure was just way, way too high. Let's see. Yeah, and we're underperforming in here. It's only 60 degrees at the center vent. All right, let's power this down. So we need some airflow to happen to keep that condenser uh, cooled off. And the smoke coming out was actually refrigerant coming out of the AC compressor, probably at the high pressure relief valve. A lot of these compressors have a little valve on there. It's a poppet valve. And uh, if pressure goes too high, that valve will open up, dump some of the refrigerant out, and then that'll let pressure come down. Valve closes again, system resumes normal operation. And I think that's what's been uh, going on with the, the noise, because I hear that there was a rattle grinding noise from this side, and then like a buzzing higher pitched uh, rattle noise from this side, and then smoke would show up from under the hood or, or by the... Uh, 
by the mirror over there and the AC compressor is on this side. If the conditions are correct, you know, uh, for example, sitting in the school pickup line for 20 minutes and it's 92 degrees outside and the AC front and rear is running full chooch, that'll, that'll, that'll heat soak the system enough to put enough pressure into it or let pressure come up high enough to uh, open those valves. And I believe that valve opens up like at 400, 450 PSI. Um, so that's that's a lot of pressure. Uh, that being said, as long as this thing does not sit with the AC on for 15, 20 minutes, because I guess it takes a while for the, the symptom to occur, as long as it stays moving down the road, we should have uh, enough airflow going over the cooling package to keep all the pressures and temperatures in line. Moving on up. Let's see, Hondas are always 17. Reverse clickage. That was tight. So naturally, it's super hot in here because this thing's been running for a while. So I don't, I don't want to burn myself. I'm gonna do this without touching these hot things. Extended reach. Oh yeah, that stuff is spent. Kind of low too. We didn't drain much out of here. I think 500 miles past the uh, 5,000 synthetic oil change interval is a little bit too far. We should step this one down to like 3,000 because it is burning some. That was uh, maybe three quarts of oil that came out. Das ist nicht gut. All right, let's let this drain for a while. I want to get all that oil out. Get out of here. All right, filter. You're coming with me. It's hot and oily. filter came off a mobile filter is going on you go into your new home there filter and filter click yeah that's right I tricked you guys into a an oil change video today ha ha ha, -ha. now this moment right here is why these little things are dangerous because my subconscious mind tells me that that fastener is tight because I tightened it with a tool. And if you're in a hurry, you overlook that kind of thing. You leave a drain plug loose. You've done it. Plug clickage. Oh wait, no, no, hang on. We gotta achieve proper torque here. That's uh, that's not gonna work. Well, that's fine. I have a specialized oil drain plug torque wrench. Got it, Kmart. Yeah. Uh, mm, Thirty pounds, right? Click. That was it. All right, let's get our toys out of here. And of course, we've got to clean our mess. Nice and shiny. There we go. Beautiful. I missed a spot. All righty, we need five quarts of fully synthesized five winter 20. Get our oil cap. Oh, by the way, the cap says 020, but I can also use 520, and that's, that's what we're gonna use. Cause this is higher mileage. Oh, epic fail. Aha, got it. Love a fast pour. Excellent. 
All right, let's start it up and prime the filter. We're getting cranking now, please. Looking good, powering down. All right, what do we got here? Top of the marks, a little high. I kind of like them just below the top of the mark, but I'll live with that. All right, now we're challenged with the task of resetting the maintenance life reminder. Let's see how we do this. I think we, I think we just push and hold the trip reset. I think it's 30 seconds. And then the service A, at the top of the screen there will uh, flash like that, let up, hold again. And I think we just keep holding it till it resets. Don't make a liar out of me. What is this? Let's try it again. Okay, that's not working. Maybe, maybe I can do it through the menu on the radio or something. Perhaps I forgot how these ones work. Let's try that. We'll go menu, settings. Yeah, here we go. Let's try that. Vehicle, let's try vehicle settings. I'm using the little wheel on the radio here. Uh, trip A right now. No, for, no, 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 no. Interior, now these are function settings. I don't want those. I want main, ah, hey, there it was. See that? Maintenance reset. Ha ha. Now how do I, okay, reset please, aha, yep, reset all of them, all right, oil life 100%, reset complete, Unimus, figured it out, yay, let's just verify that here on the dash, starting the engine, and 100%, very good, okay, figure that out, hooray for me. Okay. All right, so we got regular hood mode, and then we got service hood mode. All types of extra space. Look at that. Oh yeah. Now this uh, whole operation here is going to go very smoothly because uh, I don't have time for this to go south today. I've got I got too much stuff here going on. Now I've just done one of two things. I've either uh, cursed myself, and this is going to be a disaster. Doubt it. Or I just commanded the universe to make sure that this thing, uh, this all goes according to plan, so to speak. So we're gonna go with option B, I've commanded the universe. And uh, we're gonna see how that works out for us. Well, we're not gonna be doing anything unless I can get my, uh, my flanges down there to where this fan is bolted onto the radiator. So uh, I hope I can pull this plastic off here and uh, something amazing happening. None of these uh, clips are breaking as I remove them. This is what I'm looking for here. We've got the two tabs that hold the fan on, the upper hose, which that's gonna have to come off to get the fan out, unfortunately. And I think I'm gonna pull these uh, radiator brackets off and try to slide this whole assembly forward and then sneak that fan out this way instead of this way. Can I do it? Nobody knows. The shadow knows. Oh, oh, oh. Now we got some wiggling action going on. I can also get to the plug right there. Let's pull that off next. Yeah, way down yonder. Giving it the old uh, Erico style reach around here. Mm, need more leverage. Aha! Plug is unplugged. Everything is going according to plan. 
one bolt here on that mounting tab and then one more right here upside down right here on that mounting tab so it's a good reverse click back up and flippy floppy pull that one out next Ooh, another reverse click incoming Come here. Ah, come on. Got it. What is this? The the eyes deceive me. There's another wire on there. And another connector. We're getting some double reach around action today. Alright, got that one. Okay, the fan is loose with the exception of the two pegs at the bottom that secure the bottom side of it. Now I just need to get this hose disconnected and we'll, uh, we'll sneak this fan out somehow. And this is a job from my handy dandy hose plant flyers with a hose sticker still stuck to them. Is it gonna reach? Oh, I don't know guys, I don't know if I can get that down there. Can't even see what I'm doing anyway, so that doesn't matter. There. Slide that forward some. There. You know what? I'm uh, getting ahead of myself here, and I'm about to make a mistake and a huge mess. I'm fixing to spill a bunch of coolant everywhere. So instead of doing that, let's try to vacuum some of it out. Powering on, loud noises. See the hose collapse. All right, that should be good. All right, now let's see about getting this hose out of here. Ah, that's better. Much cleaner. I like it. Okay, moment of truth. Does the fan come out? That's the, uh, that's the real question here. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I think I can. Hmm. Come on. We're so close, yet, uh, so far, this little this tang thing's getting in the way. Okay, change of plans. I'm going to remove this latch and probably remove this cooling fan and then slide this fan over and then up. That's what I'm gonna have to do because this is in the way too much and this is in the way too much. There's three hood latch bolts. And one hood latch connector. It's for the hood open warning indicator. Yeah, there, there it is right there. So we'll unplug that, put this over here, and then uh, pull this other fan out. Again, that's uh, two more bolts. I've already unplugged it because the plug comes from the driver's side fan. not be defeated in minivan. All right. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Come here. Just doesn't want to give it up. Look at that. Here, now we can do a comparison. Look at this one. Look at the wobble in that. It's a wobbly fan. And for comparison, this is the passenger side known good fan. We have an absence of wobble. So good fan, junk fan. Let's get our new one. Yeah, that's not gonna work. 
There. What do we got here? Two of those, two of those. One connector, same here. Let's look at the pins. Those are good. All right, I accept this unit. Okay, driver's side fan is going in first. Cause we gotta slide it on over. What are you stuck on? There. Awkward. Now the next challenge is gonna be to line up those little pins down at the bottom. You can't see them. I probably can't feel them. We just have to kind of poke around until we hit that home run. Oh, there we go. Yeah, got it. Beautiful. Let's get this guy bolted in right quick. Now there's a wire. Where are you? There's that connector there. Oh, that's cheap. Why aren't you connecting? What, what is this? Like it wants to connect and it should, but it's not doing it. Maybe if I push harder. Uh, negative. Something's going on here. It's weird. Right, let's try to make this go back together. I'll spray some silicone lube on there. It smells good. Yeah, it's just a tough fit on the plastic. I'm getting aftermarketed. Mm, and it does not connect. What, uh, what is this? So I went over and cut off the connector off the old fan. Sorry, the connectors are out of frame. I'm comparing both of them and they look identical, but the new one just doesn't fit. Okay, it leaves me no choice. There's only one thing to do. It's not gonna work. Chop it off. Yeah, you see what I'm up to. I'm just gonna use the old connector. I will not accept defeat here. What I'm gonna do is just strip these and I've got some heat shrink connectors. I'm not gonna solder these together because uh, these are a high load circuit and I don't want them to uh, get hot and then melt the solder. Oops, this is gonna get a double crimp, I missed. Yep, that new connector's junk, it does not fit very well, so we're just gonna splice the old connector in and have a nice day. Problem solved. Yeah, a little more. There. All right. Um, I need some heat shrink. All right, handled. Heat shrink installed. And a crimp kick. Oh no! Yeah, I got it. You gonna fit? There. Oh 
Okay, all right. Now we're in business here. Now we're in business. There. All right, now we're good. Now we're good. Let's clip this guy back in where it's supposed to go. Oh, there, now it's plugged in. We're getting somewhere. I don't know if I can put this back in now. It seems that the... Uh, Yeah, that goes in there, so this one should do the same. And it doesn't, doesn't clip in at all. Oh, you know what? It's got a broken piece from the uh, old fan stuck in it there. Haha, now we're golden, look at that. Okay, we're back on track. Let's get the other fan in. Down into your home there, fan. Fan gravity. Did you guys see that? I dropped it. Pinched my finger and dropped it. Twice. And uh, there's our connector connected. Connector for the hood latch. Uh, there it is. Put that on. See it right there. Now I'm going to make sure to line this latch up with the witness marks from the washers on the bolts. That way it's adjusted properly and the hood doesn't flop around. Kind of eyeballing it, but it'll work. Nice. One more at the bottom right, yeah. We'll get that hose on next. Right. And the clamp, that's gonna be fun. What if I can get it from the back? Okay, I got it. It's gonna be showing up right here. Okay, recap, connector, connector, hose, four bolts, radiator hose. We just gotta do brackets and we're good. Okay, brackets are on. Let's throw the bolts in the two brackets. That was a quick fail. Excellent. a 10 millimeter oh no and it never hit the ground yeah no we're not doing this that was a snap on 10 mil and I'm getting it back where are you uh, uh, uh. I hear it rattling you guys see it in there where is it is that it Where is that thing? Yeah, so we're, we're magnet fishing now. Yeah, there you are. All right, 30 bucks. So I forgot what I was doing. Brackets, 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 okay. Two more brackets. Condenser bracket, back on track. And radiator bracket. Rear. Rear. 
Well, that was fun. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and refill this coolant here and uh, verify that this fan works. Let's see what kind of temperatures the AC makes now. Now it's gonna run for about an hour. We're gonna park it right here and just let it run. Yeah, let's back up some and put our little cover back on. Okay, let us restart things the engine. Okay, we're gonna need the thermal meter. Full speed ahead on the AC. AC on, maximum cold. There we go. I know. All right, that appears to be full enough for now. We'll check it again later. Give the bottle the top off because that uh, cool bottle is empty. By top off, I mean I'm going to fill it to the fill line or the max line, not to the very top. Okay, let's check this radiator level again. It's been about five minutes. So far, so good. Look at that. Already, we do see that the uh, this fan is running because the AC is on and the other fan is running. So we have a confirmed fix. Let's uh, let's sit here for a little while, hang out, and make sure we don't uh, get any AC system failure or any uh, refrigerant discharge from the high pressure valve. Actually, change of plans. While that thing's coming up to temperature, let's roll the AC machine over there and uh, just pull this refrigerant down and make sure it's got a full charge. Yeah, I like that plan. That's going to work out way more better. Powering on. Connecting. Check out our high side pressure. Remember earlier we were up in the 250, almost 300 zone. So that, uh, that fan operation is critical. This is good. Recover. I am going to go ahead and shut this AC down. Off. There we go. I'm gonna shut this down while uh, while that system's recovering. Yeah, this system's definitely low. It's nearly finished recovering. We've got out 0.8 pounds almost. Spec is uh, what uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.75 kilograms. So that's uh, roughly oh almost two pounds. Actually, pounds to kilos is a multiple of 2.2, so if uh, we're looking for 0.75 pounds, uh, times two is 1.5, and then a fifth of one and a half is five. Okay, so we're gonna call that like 1.6, 1.7 pounds, roughly, not doing proper calculations. Uh, either way, it's low, so we're gonna recharge it, then we'll retemp it. Okay, the recharge is complete. Let's power the AC back on. Full blast. Check our pressures. Okay, again, revisiting the fans. You can see they're both running full bore. AC pressures are looking good, just over 225. I accept that. Check it out. 40 degrees. 42. 
I'm biased. 42. I win. And, uh, I'm a little pressed for time due to all this other stuff hanging out around here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this one good. Fan's running. We visually confirmed that. The AC is ACing. The charge level is up again. So it looks like uh, this fan is good to go for now. That being said, we'll go ahead and close this one out and uh, call it quits for this particular video. As always, before I go, I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for watching my video. I certainly hope you like this video. If in fact you did like this video, please feel free to communicate that to me effectively by happy tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And also, do not forget to subscribe if you are so inclined and you have not done so already. That way you do not miss out on any more of my future content. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of transmission.